So before I start, I quickly wanted to introduce Artem. Uh, unfortunately, he could not come to CVPR. Uh, while traveling in, uh, recently, he, he lost his passport and he couldn't get a new one on time. So that's why I'm here to give the talk. Um, this is um, a project that um, we were basically, you know, the main motivation be behind this project was uh, oh, the, mic. the main motivation behind this project was that recently drones are becoming very popular for civilian applications and uh, it creates a need for cheap and effective aerial surveillance systems. So systems that can be used to monitor an airspace and find unknown drones and UAVs. So existing solutions for this uh, task uh, currently use other technology, you know, compact surveillance radar, acoustics, radio frequency based sensors. Um, some systems do use video cameras, but the, the role of computer vision currently is quite limited. So uh, the question he wanted to ask was, to what extent can this problem be solved with a passive set of uh, passive computer vision, passive video cameras? So try to see if you can spot this tiny drone in this high resolution video. The top corner shows an inset of the drone. So depending on the scene, that uh, the background scene in which the drone the, that's observed by the camera, this could be a really hard visual detection task. So concretely, the problem we're interested in uh, in this paper is uh, we would like to uh, figure out a way to automatically recover the precise 3D trajectory of a UAV from a few fixed ground cameras. Uh, we, do, we assume that we do not have any communication with the drone. And we also um, do not assume perfect camera calibration. So part of the work is to refine the camera calibration along with recovering the trajectory. And we do this by, we make a few assumptions for the, for the timing, we assume that there's a single UAV in the, within the space of interest. The cameras are synchronized and the UAV is in the line of sight of, of most of the cameras. And our current system is uh, operating on batch mode on archive videos, so it's not yet real time. Uh, now there's a lot of work in computer vision on uh, tracking in video single as well as multiple views. Uh, some people have looked into detecting aircrafts in single views a single video, uh, but, but those methods are really difficult to extend to recovering 3D information about the, the flying object. Uh, Multi-camera systems have been studied a lot in our community, but um, most of the work that we're familiar with look at uh, tracking objects on the ground, and often all, a lot of them require good calibration to start with. So not a lot of work on tracking aircrafts. Uh, now we were motivated by some recent work on joint object and camera pose recovery, and, and we, we, this sort of led us to try and solve the tracking, detection, reconstruction, and calibration problem in a, in a joint framework. And similar to work on constraint structure from motion and bundle adjustment, we try to incorporate geometric priors into the formulation to make the uh, reconstruction more accurate. So this is the setup. We start with processing our, our individual videos independently. We do some single view uh, detection and tracking and recover a bunch of um, proposals, little blobs shown in the middle video. Uh, there's a way to select, uh, if you select a single uh, detection from every video frame, then you get the correspondence for implicitly, and then you can run a structure from motion system to get an initial trajectory shown on the right. Now that trajectory is noisy, um, and this is where we incorporate some knowledge about the dynamics of the UAV into the optimization. So this, this is a, a second bundle adjustment uh, optimization we perform where we actually have a dynamics prior. And this gives a more optimized, a more smooth trajectory. So concretely, we are, what we are proposing is a new technique for doing 3D reconstruction of a single moving point from a fixed set of cameras. We do this in a slightly different framework. We, we incorporate multi-view detection and 3D reconstruction. So what it means is we actually keep multiple detection hypotheses in, in the different frames of the video. And we try to refine the data association between 3D point and the 2D observations while doing the bundle adjustment. And the second idea is that we are going to incorporate additional priors based on motion dynamics to regularize the trajectory. But in addition to that, we are also able to infer some of these latent model parameters uh, about the moving point. So for example, for the UAV, we can now uh, infer what some of the control inputs are. So generally, we're also able to deal with poor calibration for the camera network and uh, you know, noisy detections. Uh, so if you were using standard button adjustment, uh, you'd basically take these single 2D detections from every frame and you would put them into, you'd basically minimize the standard reprojection error metric. And this is sort of what it would look like. 
what we do instead is we store multiple 2D detections uh, per frame. So it's a small number we have in our um, current system implementation. But now in doing the bundle adjustment, you would actually compare the reprojection error with respect to each one of these hypotheses and pick the best one, so the one that gives you the lowest reprojection error. So to compute that reprojection error on a single frame, there's another small main, main problem that you have to solve. So the main, main advantage now is we are able to do this in, on every iteration when doing the bundle adjustment, so we can refine uh, uh, the, the, the association. So the advantage is we can now be more resilient to errors made in the single view video tracking that was done in the beginning. So the second idea is uh, we are going to uh, we um, introduce this trajectory prior into the uh, ob objective, and compared to standard uh, bundle adjustment where the points are treated independently, uh, when you when you introduce these kind of trajectory priors, you couple the 3D points and it destroys the sparsity, sparsity structure that makes bundle adjustment scale to large problems. So to deal with this issue, we uh, tried a different uh, approach, which was to somehow come up with a proposal trajectory. So this proposal, proposal trajectory is, in, is uh, on the slide shown, denoted by x hat. And what we try to do is we try to encourage our estimated 3D points to lie uh, close to this proposal trajectory. So in pictures, this is sort of what it looks like. We'd like our uh, black trajectory to get closest to that dotted line. So yeah, so this is a soft constraint that we put. Uh, and uh, when you do this sort of um, uh, optimization, your, your bundle adjustment scales to large problems, so long trajectories. So now a nice strategy we tried first was to generate this proposal trajectory. We tried to take noisy um, estimates of our trajectory from the previous iteration and smooth them. So this is sort of showing one way, a naive, more wide, naive way to generate these proposals. But uh, then we figured that we could try and use the, uh, try to exploit what we know about the motion dynamics of this UAV. And so people in robotics have uh, proposed a lot of these motion models for uh, different kinds of UAVs. We focus on quad rotors. So we used one of those uh, existing models and what it essentially lets you do is from these trajectories, it lets you infer the internal state of the quad rotor. And there are quantities like thrust, roll, pitch, body orientation. Uh, so the basic idea is that um, you know, these internal states are not directly observable. But what we are going to do is we are going to assume that these internal states are going to change smoothly. So the basic idea is from the previous um, iteration, we take the noisy trajectory, trans uh, transform those into the internal state representation. Uh, these are represented by gamma. Then we apply smoothing on them to get a smoothed version of the internal states, and then go back to the 3D um, representation to get our proposal trajectory. So when we plug those, uh, when we plug those into the objective, uh, this is sort of what it looks like. So now in addition to the 3D points, we have some additional variables, the internal state variables of the uh, quad rotor. And the, here gamma hat is this sort of, uh, it's a constant that was computed uh, in the previous iteration by smoothing the internal states. So this is what is putting a soft constraint on these uh, inter internal state variables. So I would like to point out that this framework lets you actually directly infer these internal states. That's one of the features of this proposed technique. So we performed extensive experiments on um, um, first evaluating this approach using synthetic data, where we uh, used a quadrotor simulator to generate data with ground truth. And we performed sensitivity analysis showing that the system is tolerant to uh, errors in the 2D detections, as well as uh, tolerant to errors in the original uh, initial calibration of the cameras. And also that under various circumstances, we can recover the input, um, some of the input, um, the control inputs that went to the UAV. So we also performed uh, extensive experiments on real uh, scenes. The first scene is this lab scene uh, where uh, we have access to like high quality gr uh, ground truth using mocap system. And then we went outdoors and did a large scale test in a big farm. And uh, we compared our method with several other baselines for doing bundle adjustment where uh, we figure out different ways of coming up with this prior, the, the 
proposal trajectory. See, this should be, oops. So, um, this should be a video. Yeah, so this is just a qualitative visualization showing, you know, there's these, uh, this is a lab uh, scene with six cameras. In red is shown the trajectory from the mocap system. And in black, what is shown is, the, is our estimated trajectory. And in this case, the drone is quite big. So we are actually tracking uh, an LED on the drone, which is like this bright point. So that's what's reconstructed in black. Uh, and this is the result on the farm data set. Uh, here we are, um, you know, this is a much, much larger area. The farm is like 100 by 50 meters. And the drone was flown to a height of 45 meters, processing a pretty long video sequence. And on the left is shown the result uh, of uh, basically doing multi-view triangulation, no bundle adjustment. The results get better when you do bundle adjustment, shown in the middle, without any prior. But when you impose the prior, this is the result. This is our method shown on the right side. You, you basically get rid of all the jitter on the, on the trajectory. Okay. So uh, yeah, so we compared all different kinds of priors. But I think uh, I, I would skip the details right now. Uh, Please come to the poster, and I can explain more about the quantitative evaluation. Um, and qualitatively, it's just showing uh, one of the videos don't play very well. Um, the third video was supposed to look similar to the first two. Ah, there it is. So it's just showing you that now you, you basically have a more robust multi-view tracking system. This is an easy case, but it gets more interesting when there's background clutter. So this is uh, a later stage of the video when the pilot is trying to land the drone. And now uh, it's really hard to spot the drone in the background. But, but our system is actually not working great here. There's, it's, a, it's a challenging uh, segment of the video. But at least we're able to roughly estimate the location of the drone uh, in 3D. Uh, yeah, so there's definitely room for improvement. So in summary, we've presented a new bundle adjustment technique. And we've uh, sort of used it to uh, recover uh, uh, the motion of a single moving point for which we know something about the motion dynamics. We used it for regularization, but we also showed that there's some promise to be able to infer additional latent information about the, of the moving point, the moving object. And uh, in addition to that, we, figured, uh, we proposed a way to try to make the uh, overall technique more robust to detection errors and refining the correspondence on the fly. In the future, uh, it, there's, uh, it's really nice to be able to do this in real time and um, deal with multiple targets. And we also believe that uh, there is potential for training uh, an appearance-based detector for these UAVs that should work much better than the simple techniques we apply. Uh, thank you. Time for questions?